investing our life in something. We don't get five minutes ago. We, you know, the, when you walk in this door, we don't get that moment back. <coughs> every moment of every day, we're investing our life in something. And that, when we realized that, at least for me, it began to change my life because it began to have me ask myself, well, what do I want to be investing my life in? And so whatever reason brings you in here tonight, I see your time as a sacred investment. And I, my hope is that when we're done here tonight, you'll have felt like it was worth your time, even if it was just for some extra credit or required credit. <clears throat> I also want to let you know from the very beginning that I, I only know how to share from my personal experience. There's some people who rely a lot on facts and figures and all those kinds of things. And even though that's important to know, I found that for myself, what has me come most alive is just sharing from my own journey, my own experience, in hopes that somehow sharing that will provide something for, for all of you in this room. And as a result of that, I want to let you know from the very beginning that I'm not attached to you agreeing with me or not. I, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to say I'm right and anybody else is wrong. The reason I get over my nerves and come and do events is because, as the video shows, clearly I'm very passionate about our world. And I'm very passionate about each and every one of us asking ourselves, what can I do with my life to make a difference for this world of which I'm a part? What can I do with my life to make a difference for those generations who will come that I'll never get to meet? whose lives depend on the choices I make. That's what gets me motivated to come and talk, not Julia's right and somebody else is wrong. So I tell people from the very beginning, if I say something you like and that resonates with you, then my commitment has worked, which my commitment is to do my best to be a mirror for us all, myself included, to look inside and see what is most true for us. So if I, if I say something you like, then actually it, all it means, like we can't actually relate to something in someone else if we don't have a piece of it within ourselves. We might be able to see it, but we wouldn't have any understanding of what we were seeing. So if I say something you like, it just means I did a good job of showing you a part of yourself that's already there. And then I tell people, if I say something you don't like, then compost it, because then it can still serve you. I feel like one of our big problems in our world is how we uh, say we're going to throw something away and we act as if there's an away. <laughs> like, there's not actually an away. I don't know if, if any of y'all have thought about that or not, but that's a big one for me. About, like, how as a society we actually behave as if there's an away. So if I say something you don't like, I request that you don't throw it away because it actually perpetuates the problem. But compost can create something new. So if I say something you don't like, compost it so that it can create something new in your world versus creating more waste and trash, which is part of our problem in the world. I'll, uh, I'll also talk a little bit about the video, a little bit about the time of the tree, and I'm going to, as quickly as possible, as what feels alive in this room, I'm going to draw you in. So I hope that you begin to feel into what would make the investment of your time here tonight matter to you, because this is a co-creative process. Um, I tell people, if people leave and say, great lecture, I failed. <laughs> I can't stand being lectured at. So I hope I don't lecture to you tonight. I hope that we just go on a journey together. But for it not to feel just like a speech to a lecture, it actually does require your participation, even if it's just the way you're listening. But also, when, it, when you feel like, OK, I want to ask something, or I want to share something, that you really think about, that's a moment that you're investing. What can you get? What can you actively do tonight to make sure that your investment is well served? Because I can only do my part, but it's a group, it's a group process and a group effort. Does that sound okay, like for a flow of this evening? Yes. Yes. Anyone saying no? No. Okay, great. Okay, so we'll go to the video. It shows my time in the tree. I'll touch back on that, but I'm going to go to the other things first. The part where Part of the reason why I like to show the video is because even though I'm known as being the girl who lived in a tree, and clearly that's something that is very big and changed my life and teaches me still to this day, I, my work sense has been like, how do we take these lessons and make them happen in our world today? One of the things that happened to me a lot when I was in Luna was the amount of interviewers would be like, oh, that's great, Julia, those are great lessons, but you're living in a tree. Is that really going to work in the real world? <laughs> I got that a lot. And I, I knew in my heart that it was going to work. And yet, the day that I was getting ready to come down, I did have that moment of panic, like, what if they are right? What if I can't make this work on the ground? What if, what if I was wrong all this time? And I had that grief and that panic come up in myself, but I just had to trust, no, this, these are, these are timeless lessons. They're about our connection. They're about what's most important to us. These are not a fad. And 
so I know this is going to be important no matter where I am. So when I came down from the tree, I started looking for ways to take these lessons and, and apply them in our lives. And in particular, I, I felt really drawn to creating ways to share the message that was more of an experience versus just talking. Because it's one thing if we hear information that we find interesting or informative, but it's a whole other thing when we get to experience it. So part of my passion is creating experiential ways to learn and to share about these issues versus just talking about them. So one of the things I did was I, I took an old tour bus and converted it to be a, a traveling model of sustainability. And what part of what I wanted to do was, was to show it in a different way because when people hear about the girl who lived in a tree for two years, there are some stereotypes that come up. <laughs> and you know some of you had them. <laughs> and it's okay. Clearly, I'm fine with it. But I, I like to like name it, right? So like when you hear about the girl who lived in the tree for two years, you think tofu eating, tree hugging, radical extremist, wacko, hippie, foo foo, new age, you're out to get somebody's job. Or pieces of that. And I like to string it all together because I find it funny to take how important we make our stereotypes and just mush it all together and be like, really? That's not what's really true about us. So people have this idea of like, oh my gosh, like that is a tree. <laughs> There's a poster child of a tree hugger, clearly I admit, I get that. <laughs> but I wanted to kind of break down that stereotype and show that caring for the earth, caring for future generations, caring for each other doesn't have to fit a stereotype, doesn't have to look a certain way. So with the bus, it, unfortunately there's not a picture of it in the video, but the inside is like dialed out, like, you know, really nice flat screen TV, happened to be energy efficient, uh, really nice furniture and cabinetry that we made all out of a reclaimed redwood that was in barns that was disintegrating, took them from disintegrating, replaned them, turned it into gorgeous wood, mixed it with bamboo to kind of show like where new technology and older materials can come together to create something beautiful. We, the, it's a little hard to tell in that video unless you're already aware, but the bus actually ran on dirty grease from behind restaurants. That's what we ran the bus on. So we would go suck the grease up, we had a three-stage filtering process that would clean all the particulate matter out of it, and then we'd pump it right into the engine, and the bus ran all over the country for many, many years running on what would be trash or waste. Again, to show people that in a healthy world, if we look to the ecology from which we're born, this earth, there is no such thing as trash or waste anywhere. Everything is food for something else. Everything is feeding energy into something else. It is a closed loop system. Anywhere in the natural world that it's healthy, it's a closed loop system. There's no trash, there's no way. Everything is participating with everything else all the time. So we did that with our fuel. <clears throat> also, you know, sadly, uh, for all of our brilliance and creativity, we, we sometimes come up with really bad ideas. And our, our mechanisms for transport are one of our bad ideas because we have these engines and most of the energy that it takes to run the engine is actually lost as heat. So we have really, really inefficient design driving us, literally and figuratively, as a human family. So we have all this energy going into an engine, and very little of that energy actually moves us forward. Most of it is actually lost as heat. So then we, again, took what would otherwise be a waste product, we captured the heat from the engine, and we used that to heat the water on board. Um, we had a, a kitchen and bathroom and everything on board, so the hot water we had was heated by waste heat from the engine. We created a radiant floor heating system in the bottom, so when we were in weather like you all are having here, <laughs> which is a little bit cold for somebody like me, we had radiant floor heating, so the radiant floor heating is actually used with water, so we capture the, the, the waste heat, heat water and run it through the floor, and it would actually heat the bus from the floor up. We had solar panels, we captured all of our gray water on site. Another one of the stupid designs that people have come up with is using fresh, clean drinking water to flush toilets with. Like out of all of our brilliant moments in history, that's just not one of them really. <laughs> fresh, clean drinking water to flush toilets. Like, does anybody else get, like we could maybe come up with a little better design than that. So we captured our gray water, so the water from our sink and our shower, we captured, we filtered it, we used that to flush the toilet with. So that's, there's even more that we did, but just to give you kind of a picture of what that was about. And again, just showing people, you can have the things you want to be comfortable and yet make better choices that are more caring, more thoughtful for the earth and for future generations.